This is the 1996 Gary Fisher Paragon. I picked this bike up off Facebook Marketplace, of course, for just $25. As you can see, it is a you know pretty rough shape in terms of the frame. We have we have a fair amount of scratches, but on the positive side, I don't see any dents on the frame itself. The frame itself says designed in California by Gary Fisher, made in the USA. It says short butted aluminum tubing, 6061. I don't really know what short butted is. I know a double butted is, but I'm, maybe you guys in the comments can tell me what does short butted frame mean. Uh, apparently it's some kind of method to make the frame a little bit lighter, I assume. Over the past uh, couple weeks since I've had it, I've been riding it with my daughter at lunch break, just around the block, about five kilometers or so. And it rides totally fine. It stops decently, not perfectly, but decently. It does shift through all the gears, not perfectly, but decently. But as you can see, there's a lot of things that could be a little bit nicer. One thing I don't like are the bull horns or whatever they're called, these, these clip-on extra grips. Not a big fan of grip shifters as most people aren't. So I, I don't know if I have anything to replace that with. I don't think so today. So that'll probably stay for today. This uh, stem is just super dorky. I do think I have some stems we can try out. I might even have some handlebars that are a bit wider. I'm not sure they might be too wide though. Uh, I would like to find some pedals. I'm not sure if I have any anything better really, but I'll dig, dig through my box. The saddle, definitely would like to change that. I think I have some saddles, maybe. I'll look around for that today. The front tire, I kind of like. It's a Kinda Small Block 8. Oh wow, there's some play here. I just noticed that. Okay, so the bearings need to be, you know, maybe adjusted a little bit. There's a little bit of play left and right on, on that wheel. By the way, I want to give kind of a public service announcement. So this bike stand you see here it was something i got off amazon for i think 50 dollars is all i paid for it and i did a review video uh like two i don't know two years ago one and a half years or something like that and in that video i i spoke fairly favorably of it i'm like wow this thing actually works you know it's not great but it works i kind of want to take that back now i've now that i've had it about two years it's probably not worth buying. I, in hindsight, I shouldn't have bought it. I should have spent the money on a good one, like a Park Tools or something like that. Here's the reason why. Number one, these little feet. It's small stuff like that. You don't think about stuff like that, but these little grippers, whatever you call them, they come off. And you can see I tried putting some kind of cement stuff in there to keep them on, but it doesn't work. They occasionally fall off and that's pretty annoying. Really just the bottom ones. But anyway, that's one thing, simple thing, but it's super annoying. And then the other thing, probably more, even more critical, is this joint here. It's constantly like bending down and this bike isn't even heavy at all. It's actually pretty light, but yeah, check this out. Look at all that motion, terrible. And I have this bolt tightened up just as much as it can go. So there's nothing more I can really do about that. Anyway, don't buy this bike stand. What do you guys think? They're a heck of a lot wider than the current ones. They're probably a good three, four inches wider in the factory ones here. I think that looks kind of cool actually. Heck, I'm gonna go with it. Okay, I'm gonna do something I think kind of stupid and wild, but I have this stem. Again, thanks to Larry. I know, it's super ugly and I'll definitely paint it before putting, on, putting it on the bike. But I kind of think it's angular, aluminum, whatever look. Which way does it go like this? Or like this, I would think like that. Kind of matches that fork with the... Anyway, I'm gonna paint it black totally black and I think it'll look better. Then I'll put these huge handlebars on. I don't know, maybe this is getting a little bit, you know, juvenile.
And I got it all completely disassembled. I got the hub body out and everything. I'm not trying to clean it, you know. I think it seems fine. But I just wanted to kind of service the whole hub. And unfortunately, I dropped a whole bunch of the ball bearings. So fortunately, I have this. And these are ball bearings from one of the Kent bikes that I had at some point. I think it was that uh, Kent road bike, right? The Kent road bike I got amazing price on $99. I ended up putting a one by drivetrain on it with uh, a different bottom bracket, like a, a normal uh, sealed bottom bracket. And it had came with this, uh, these bearings in, in its bottom bracket. This is what it had came with. And I saved them all that time. And luckily the ball bearings are exactly the same size. So anyway, good deal. And I even have some more uh, from the other side as well. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get this all um, cleaned up and reassembled. And I'll catch up to you when all that's finished. Okay, I finally got the hub back together. It feels really nice now. It did take me quite a while to figure out and I did have to refer to this diagram on where to put all the parts because I mixed them all up. But anyway, all that said, it's good now. And for the rear tire, I'm gonna put, this is actually a nice tire, but it's very old. It's the Schwabel uh, Nobby Nick. I think it's a 2.1. Now it totally doesn't match the front tire, which is a Kenda. It's not a bad looking tire either. It's not a bad looking tire either, but it's totally a different tire. But uh, whatever, that's, whatever, that's gonna be the nature of this bike. It's kind of a misfit bike. All right, so it turns out that dust cap goes down in here, not out on the top because this final lock piece does of course need to thread into the hub body. So that goes down in there, not up here. Uh, anyway, so that means I had to take everything apart and you know, the whole axle had to come out. It means I have to uh, lock everything back into place again. The only reason I keep this in the video is just so other people maybe can learn from my mistake, whatever. Even if you don't have the mistake, at least you can see that uh, even me, who, make, who does play with bikes quite a lot, you know, still makes mistakes and sometimes I still don't know what I'm doing. I'm sure if you're doing this all day as your job, you don't make those type of mistakes, I wouldn't think. But, you know, I do this once a few, or say a few times a year, you know, it's not enough to really have all the procedures committed to memory. All right, that's better. All right, now we're finally done. One thing I'm noticing and I'm kind of perplexed by is look at the derailleur. Look how, how far this jockey wheel is inbound compared to this one. You might say, well, yeah, it's, it's been. What's a big deal? Jockey wheels, I mean, uh, derailleur wheels get bent. It does happen. But what's perplexing to me about it is how it was shifting fine before. Before I took the whole bike apart, I was able to shift through all eight gears. That's kind of crazy that it was, it was working. Now, of course, this is a really budget build, so I didn't want to spend very much money like at all on anything. But one thing I did buy was a eight-speed trigger shifter to go with this eight-speed eight speed cassette. And I went ahead and marked how much I spent, which was 1422. But there it is, Shimano SLM310. Looks to be in really good condition, you know, nearly like new. Okay, it's been so long since I started this project, I actually lost the spacers, or I don't remember, maybe the original stem didn't have any spacers. In fact, I don't even remember what the original stem was. Anyway, I don't have any spacers. Now, spacers don't, uh, aren't you know, really that important other than to load your bearings. Once you've loaded your bearings and locked down your, your stem, then they don't really matter. So I could 3D print one, that might be easy. 
But I figured I did buy a lathe, so why not turn a nicer looking one? I have this piece of brass. This brass bearing loader, I'm just gonna call it for lack of a better word. Uh, it's complete, I made it on the lathe. It looks really nice. It's a bit heavier. I probably should have made it out of aluminum. It still works totally fine. I think it'll work totally fine. Uh, it looks kind of funky with that color, but um, that's consistent. That's a consistent theme throughout this whole bike is kind of funky colors and, and so forth. So we're just gonna go with it. Of course I could paint it if I wanted, but uh, I think the funkiness shall continue today. Obviously, I can cut these down if I if I want. So they end up being too wide, which they really might be. They they look kind of kind of huge. Getting kind of excited because it's looking kind of like maybe I can get this thing rideable today. Wouldn't that be cool? Those bars look ridiculous. Okay, the bike is coming together pretty good. So let's throw these cheapo $14 uh, pedals on. Looks pretty nice. You may notice here that I'm not too skilled with this de derailleur hanger alignment gauge. You notice that I'm not too skilled with this because that's because I've never used one before. I just got this out of the box a few minutes ago. This will be my first time using it. Of course, I watched some YouTube videos on how to do it. Oh wow. Oh my goodness. So as I could see just from looking at it from the bottom, this is extremely, whoa, extremely out of alignment. This was about $90 for this tool. Seems like way too much. And yes, I could have made it. I know I could have, but I just didn't feel like it this, this time around. And the reason I went with the more expensive one than the other one that's about $30 cheaper is just because in truth, it's kind of a change in thinking that I've started having over the past um, it's a change of thinking I've had recently. I'm starting to try to buy higher quality things rather than just the cheapest things. The reason for that is like just logically with this, um, I'm 40 years old. I wouldn't be totally surprised if I'm still doing this in another 40 years when I'm 80. So gosh, this is so far out. I mean, you have about two inches this way and this way it's touching the rim. That's extreme. So what it means is I need to bend it this way. But, but anyway, as I was saying, um, you know, who knows? I might be doing this stuff until I'm like 80 or something. So uh, might as well buy, spend the extra 30 bucks, you know, get the better stuff. After a year, I won't, you know, even less than that. After a day, after a week, I won't even think about it. And I'll be glad that I have a quality tool instead of something that's like, you know, a little bit less than quality. I mean, this hanger is just all over the place though. I knew it was, I could just tell looking at it. That's what prompted me to buy this. Cause I was like, this thing is like, really not good. Okay, after about 10 minutes of messing around with it, I have it pretty much dead on. Touches there, touches there, and touches there. So I would call that, and also touches there. Well, I'd say that's about as close as I'm gonna get, especially considering this wheel isn't even exactly true. And actually, I was something I was going to mention. This whole entire wheel uh, needs to be rebuilt, I would say. I didn't mention it before, but a few of these spokes are actually uh, rather damaged uh, from a chain falling into them at some point, obviously. They're like just beat up on the inside. Plus, we have one of the nipples. I don't remember if I mentioned that before. One of the nipples, let me show you real quick. That nipple, I think it is that one. Yeah, it's all smashed up and you can't even, you can't even put a spoke wrench on it. It's so smashed up. So I can't, it was hard to true the wheel. I mean, I kinda, I kinda was able to do it anyway, but uh, it was a little bit tricky. It's true enough now, you know, it works. Although well used, this is actually a pretty nice derailleur. It's a XT. Kind of excited to try the eight speed. I don't think I've ever, I mean, I don't remember ever having an eight speed bike. Everything of mine's been nine or seven. I've heard that eights are uh, really good. They're really robust. Looking forward to trying it. Oh yeah, that looks way better than it used to. Okay, excellent. I 
Okay, I'm pretty excited. The bike is pretty much done. I'm just gonna throw some end caps on there. One thing I wanted to let you guys know is um, I spent a lot of time fooling with the shifter actually got bound up inside. I had to take it apart. I spent a little bit of time tuning the, uh, the rear derailleur and everything. And I wanted to let you guys know that uh, even though sometimes you see in my video, I just kind of speed through things. In reality, a lot of this stuff takes like way longer than it might appear. So the only reason I say that is so you, you know, you shouldn't feel discouraged if you're working on your bikes or anything. And it takes like a ridiculously long time to do stuff sometimes. And sometimes you like, you know, put the shifter on the outside of the, 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 uh, brake lever, all kinds of goofy things I do sometimes. And, uh, you know, just to let you know, it's, I think it's pretty normal, uh, to, have a lot of problems and just do things wrong, especially when you're not a professional. You know, we're just kind of hobbyists here. So um, yeah, don't feel discouraged. It takes me a lot, it's a lot harder than it might appear on the video is all I'm trying to say. It's not like things go smoothly for me as much as it might appear. In fact, things rarely go smoothly. <laughs> anyway, just about finished this up, tightening this stem down. Compared to that GT I just got finished building up, this feels very light and wow, look how low, look how low the handlebars are. This looks really cross country or something. <laughs> very, very wide and low. Okay, well, let's see what it weighs in at. Let me take a guess. I'm gonna guess around 12 kilograms. I'll put that in pounds up on the screen. I don't know what that is. I'm gonna just, I'm just guessing 12 might be, I, I think it's gonna be around there. It might be 13, it might be 11 something, let's see. No way. 11.1? Wow. I knew it was light, but wow, I didn't know it was that, that light. 11.1? That's, I think, that's the same weight as my carbon fiber cross country bike over there. I don't know how that happens, but yeah, I, I could tell this frame was light. I even said it in, a, I think, an Instagram post or something. When you bend this, or excuse me, when you squeeze this frame, like in the middle, you can actually feel a little give. So I think this is a, very lightweight uh, frame. Anyway, I'm gonna go give it a ride and uh, see how, how it rides. I can tell already I need to adjust some things, but whatever, let's give it a ride. And uh, you know, I guess that'll be pretty much it for this video. I'll just add some beauty photos, beauty photos of the bike uh, at the end here. So thanks everybody for watching. If you enjoy these type of videos, um, you know, subscribe and all that stuff. And by the way, I'll probably, as long as this test ride goes okay, take this out this weekend on a mountain bike track. So uh, by the time I post this, I'll be done with that and I will post a link to that ride on Strava if you wanna follow me there and maybe I'll put some commentary on how, that, how the bike performed on an actual uh, mountain bike trail. All right, talk to y'all later, bye.